Oh, wow, cool. So I'm I'm ready to like I'm ready to light up a bunch. Yeah. Uh, the nightclub I'm not ready for. Let's go. Let's let's, let's get a drink. I never I never just seen a party like this. see what was previously just proof of concepts being into like full-blown commercial use cases uh, for blockchain. So it's not about disrupting and, and getting rid of the old guard, it's how do we try to bring those them along with education and seeing how they can adapt in what they're doing and if they can create wins for them too, they're not going to fight it as much, right? The future of America, if we are able to harness the potential of blockchain technology, um, is jobs, investment, and innovation. Our forefathers sacrificed to create a, a nation based upon liberty and democracy. This is America, and, and we will fight for our freedom to defend what we've built. This has the potential to positively change the lives of billions of people. This essentially is democratizing the global financial system in a way where every human being on the planet will have equal access. They'll have the same tools. Isn't that a good thing? It's really hard. So, yeah. Um, uh, losing sleep, stomach always uh, upset, uh, um, stressed out like crazy. What it amounts to is you have these lawyers that are controlling the technology, which is not what you want at all because you're gonna put these monsters, you know, things that shouldn't be, that are more complex or are built in ways that are not efficient or, you know, not appropriate uh, because the lawyers think that this is what the regulators want even though they're not saying it. Whenever you do anything like that where you have a bureaucratic control over engineering, uh, that's Chernobyl. That's how Chernobyl happened. Uh, you look at uh, the Challenger disaster. So it feels like we're supposed to fight this battle with the SEC. I mean, they're coming after us. Uh, we didn't do anything wrong. Every interpretation I see of the actual law, we didn't break any of those things. I mean, there's not, there's not a whole lot you can do. You, the lawyers ask you questions, you answer as honestly as you possibly can and give them all the information that they need because really that's the best, best way to handle things. I really do feel that the SEC, this whole process and, and what they're doing and constantly questioning us is affecting his health. His, his mental health, his physical health, um, it's affecting his mood, it's affecting our marriage. I mean, it's affecting him as, as a dad, too. He's trying to innovate, in it because he's great at thinking of ways to use the blockchain technology and how it can, it can better um, different parts of the economy and different parts of different businesses. And he's not able to do that as freely because I feel like he's constantly answering questions from the lawyers and it's so difficult because the lawyers don't understand it either. The lawyers don't understand the technology. So then you have the lawyers talking to the SEC. So the lawyers don't understand the technology. They, they know the financial security aspect of it. But my biggest fear is the SEC coming down and shutting Dragon Chain down. And we're going to throw Joe in jail. It's my biggest fear. <laughs> it's not funny. I know that I probably differ with some folks here about their opinion about it. I personally uh, think that uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing that the, the industry as a whole is being looked at. 
um, I think it will actually help everybody, you know, because the good ones will float to the top, right? And, you know, I believe we're one of the good ones. So I see it as a good thing, personally. I, I always get uh, um, uh, frustrated and angry at inefficiencies, but when it's, when it's to this level, it's bad. <laughs> I, I can't sleep as well. I don't think I fell asleep around three, right? Um, and uh, for a while I was losing a lot of weight, which isn't a bad thing, but it's because my stomach is all messed up. Um, and now I've been eating too much because I'm stressed out. Uh, you know, I end up wasting my time dealing with, with uh, this whole situation where, you know, I should be able to um, be a little more strategic. You know, and I'm, I'm able to, because I'm able to separate myself, but it's hard. So, I mean, in the end, it's, it's one of those things that's, you know, whatever doesn't kill you just makes you stronger, but I, I do wish I could just focus on the things I think I should be focusing on. It's just hell, right? So, and all of this is because of, because of the SEC. Everything else about this entire job, everything that, everyone who's working for this company, the actual job, the real work, is like a dream job. So I've been stressed with the SEC stuff, so uh, I'm uh, headed up to the hills, he headed up into the hills to uh, blow off some steam. Sasquatch country. to create a, a nation based upon liberty and democracy. Now our government is attacking its own citizens for developing technology based on the purest expression of those values. I'm a patriot. I've spent uh, most of my career working with the government. I've always held America's best interest uh, close to my heart. America should be at the forefront of the blockchain and cryptocurrency revolution. There are literally trillions of dollars uh, of economic growth at stake. Many of the world's greatest challenges will be solved with new systems powered by blockchain and cryptocurrency, and the sky is the limit. For, for Dragon Chain, for, for the technology itself, uh, and for the evolution of humanity, it, it's all at stake right now. This is America, and, and we will fight for our freedom to defend what we've built. Bitcoin and blockchain is the most important technology I will ever see in my life. In other countries, you have a little bit more clarity, but that's really what's holding back innovation in, in the United States. There's also been a lot of statements that have come out of the SEC over the past year. So the chairman testified earlier saying that he hasn't seen an ICO that wasn't a security. And so does that mean all tokens are securities? And the bus would drop me off right there. That's one of the buses. And I'd walk through Lafayette Park to get to my office. It was such a surreal moment, especially as someone from a really small rural area of the country, to come and be in DC and walking into the White House every day. You go up to the gates, you type in a code, Secret Service lets you in, you show your ID and your pass, and then you go in. And it was just every day, it was like this crazy, surreal moment for me. Um, so I'm Perry and Boring, the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. So I'm a native Floridian. I was studying economics at the University of Florida during the housing collapse. So during this historic financial crisis. So that bubble, when it popped, impacted my family, my community, really everyone I knew. I really wanted to understand what was going on. So I started asking a lot of questions, did a lot of research, and the results and conclusions that I came to were really upsetting and, and pretty scary. And so I decided to dedicate my career to fighting for a better economic future for my generation and those that will come after me. Um, and that led me to Bitcoin. So I learned about Bitcoin through my work on the Hill, researching different types of economic issues. And from the moment I was introduced to this, digital currency that was not controlled by the government or a corporation or a group of people, I came to the conclusion that Bitcoin and blockchain is the most important technology. 
I will ever see in my life, and I've got to work in this industry. So I worked on Capitol Hill for several years, so I got to really understand the legislative process. How do laws get passed through Congress and signed into law by the president? Because if you want to affect change, you've got to be able to drive the legislative process. I don't know if you've been paying attention to Congress recently, but it is not a rational being to have to deal with. The place we were in Washington in that time was out of fear, anxiety, and skepticism. People didn't understand it, they were scared of it, and they didn't believe in it. And so to me, as someone who really wanted to dedicate my career to this ecosystem, decided to start an organization, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, to be a nonprofit, to be headquartered in Washington, to work with the policy community, to teach them and give them resources about this technology that's of high integrity and high quality. The internet was created out of government programming, multi-millions of dollars, decades of government funding and research to create the ARPANET, what became the internet. The very first consumer use case for the internet was email. So send a simple message online instantly, peer to peer. We are 10 years into blockchain. There's been no government funding behind it to help develop it and support it. Um, and the first use case for blockchain has been Bitcoin. Send a payment a currency online instantly, peer to peer, um, anywhere in the world for free or for very low cost. We need better architecture to facilitate transactions. The internet was built to facilitate communications, to share information. It was not built to share anything of value, and that's what blockchain is. The US is at a big disadvantage because we have a very fragmented regulatory approach. It's very different than a lot of other areas of the world where they have streamlined regulatory structure. The US Department of the Treasury was the first regulator to issue guidance around the blockchain and the crypto space. And their guidance said that convertible virtual currency like Bitcoin would be regulated like a currency. Later on, the IRS, they came out and said, well, convertible virtual currencies are gonna be taxed as property. So one's currency, one's property. The CFTC said, well, actually, it can be a commodity, or it is a commodity. Then the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, is regulating and calling um, some of these tokens securities. So there were just four examples of ways in which different regulators are applying their jurisdiction. So how can something be a currency, a property, commodity, and a security all at one time. So if you can imagine, if you're a business trying to operate in this space, it's very hard to navigate through those regulatory waters. Canada and the United States have taken a relatively conservative approach to securities regulation, and that essentially has driven a lot of blockchain companies to leave. So if the U.S. really fights this thing here, the other countries are going to be saying, that's great, yeah, keep fighting it there, we're going to, we're going to move it forward. You've got big, powerful incumbents that are spending lots of money to influence regulators to kill the industry. So I was in university at the time with a group of friends and we started to really look into Bitcoin and, and what could we do about it. And through that I got really involved in the Toronto crypto community and I got introduced to somebody named Anthony DiOrio. So it began for me in the summer of 2012. I heard about Bitcoin, bought Bitcoin the first day I heard about it. It was under 10 bucks I got it for. Started the Toronto Bitcoin meetup group a couple weeks later because there was no communities in Toronto or in Canada. A few months in, I'd sold my first company in Bitcoin. And for all Bitcoin, I used that capital from the sale of the company and from what my investment was, and I funded Ethereum. This is a great governance lesson with Ethereum. People were given a small amount of money, about 18 million. That's not a huge amount of money to go and try to change the world. And they did. They created the most successful open source project of all time. So once Ethereum came onto the forefront and the thought of not just Bitcoin, but anything could be made on the blockchain, the possibilities are endless, all the developers started flooding in. This is the modern day industrial revolution or the modern day version of the internet, the new internet. But it's about 10 times bigger than the internet. So I think things are going from the age of information to the age of, of value and that value is going to be much more important than information. 
So just like everybody in the 1980s saw computers and they say one day these computers are going to change the whole world, they're going to make the world amazing, but it still did take decades to get to the iPhone and take decades to get to the internet. So if the U.S. really fights this thing here, the other countries are going to be saying that's great, yeah, keep fighting it there, we're going to... We're going to move it forward. Part of the reason I think that we're seeing so much uncertainty in the U.S. is because of lobbyists. You know, you've got big, powerful incumbents that are spending lots of money to influence regulators to kill the industry. Canada and the United States have taken a relatively conservative approach to securities regulation, and that essentially has driven a lot of blockchain companies to leave. Regulators have an important job to do, and that is to protect their people. Obviously, this wouldn't be a very good thing if it were a fight between the new and the old. Yeah. It's everyone figuring out how to evolve together. Welcome to Crypto Castle. It's something like six or seven millionaires have been minted while living here. After initial investment of around 34,000, I've grown it to a portfolio of around $10 million. These would be like a real-time price stream of crypto prices. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. this is front entrance. Oh, this is great. Great fine, Barbara. Amazing. Oh. And this is a great office. So yeah, we've got lots of different funds and money things. Oh, well, this is great. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, come style this out. I, I was an interior decorator in another life. Where are you living now? So I've got a house up the hill in Pichero called the Crypto Castle. Well, welcome to Crypto Castle number one now. Number two coming soon. This is my magazine that we hand out and evangelize with. Distributed, a 108 page primer on blockchain technology. This is why Bitcoin, all about the crypto. This turns into a, a battle station for like, startup ideation. In fact, this is where Kama AI was founded, the self-driving car startup founded by the famous hacker Geohot. He slept in the uh, closet over here. Famous folks in crypto from Vitalik Buterin to Bram Cohen have stayed in this room. This is Barbara, my co-founder. Gordon, he runs most of our operation. My little protege, he's like 16, has an AI fintech company out of Cleveland. This is Oris, just dropped out of Northwestern, just turned 20 yesterday. This is Amart, one of our uh, uh, advisors for, for Awesome Ventures. I tried activism. I had been at Occupy Wall Street in Zuccotti Park. I knew the financial financial system was broken, now I knew the political system was broken. And I had this period of cognitive dissonance where I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But shortly after falling out of love with politics, I transferred to the University of Michigan and just happened to move in with the young Bitcoin enthusiast. I was cynical and quite skeptical, uh, but I didn't really have anything better to look to. And as someone that had seen that, you know, you couldn't fix our current financial system, you couldn't fix our current political system, as much as I came from a very kind of liberal Marxist upbringing, I saw the potential in Bitcoin to be this radically inclusive, democratized financial system that anybody could participate in that was totally global. This is where Augur was founded. This is where my fund was founded. Casper, the, the sharding system for Ethereum was named here. It's really just this ideation station. People come, live, build, and grow together. It's really remarkable what it's become over the past half decade or so. It's been absolutely amazing to see how it's something like six or seven millionaires have been minted while living here. Uh, you know, young people under my mentorship, you could probably add another half dozen. I mean, it's wild. So I'm Kingsley, I run two VC funds. Chain Fund Capital, which is a blockchain fund and science fiction ventures. I was an early investor in Bitcoin. I first invested in 2013. And I was really fascinated at the way you could decentralize money. Over time, I started investing in more early stage blockchain companies. And 
Uh, over time, I amassed a portfolio of about 50 investments. The majority of them are actually based in San Francisco, so I ended up moving from London to San Francisco to be closer to the companies I was investing in. After initial investment of around 34,000, I've grown it to a portfolio of around $10 million. But I, I do feel much happier. I'm part of um, a better community. Having worked previously in investment banking, I've seen like how inefficient um, existing financial infrastructure can be. So I'm really interested in how a decentralized form of finance um, can be, you know, compile the next thousand years of, of financial payments on the planet. I really loved Bitcoin. It was this tool to empower potentially billions of people and have financial sovereignty in this growingly Orwellian world. It's really something special. Partners received subpoenas today from the SEC, and at this point, it feels like they've declared all-out war. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's not a scam. I'm stressed. I'm sweating. I'm freaking out. We're under investigation by the SEC. But there were days where we had a hundred lawyers at a law firm reviewing documents. They've checked and checked and checked, and now they're making us spend six to ten million dollars.